we've given Jim Barker ample time to think about this. Uh, welcome back, Jim. Good to see you. Simone so Lawrence, Steve. Canadian, Canadian Football Hall of Fame. If you're on the voting committee, what are you saying? It's not a fair question to me because he was on a team I coached, and and I've got love for the guy. I hated him when he was on the other team. He's a, he's been a villain in the league. Uh, you know, it's one of those things that I look at. He's been in the league for what twelve years or so. A couple with the Elks and ten with the Ty Cats. Three of those years, he was the East Division nominee to be the MOP. Uh, you know, he was. Uh, three times all CFL, five times East Division All Star. I, I think he should be. I think he's been good for the league. I think he's uh, the type of guy the league has needed. Um, he he just he keeps things interesting. People hate him. I mean, they just. I know when I was with the Argos, I just I couldn't stand. He was mouthy, and I couldn't stand him. And then he was on my team, and I said, "Man, this guy, he is the he is what stirs the drink." So. I would say yes, but again, it's not a fair question because anybody who, I mean, I had, there's a ton of guys that have played for me that I think should be there, and uh, but that's just, that's bias. <laughs> yeah, well, I think it's a, a fair question because you have more knowledge than most of the people that vote on these things. So uh, that's why I put it to you. So I, I appreciate that, which reminds me, that, that's the thing with the Dan Marino or even Kevin Glenn or in hockey, Marcel Dion, if you follow that at all. Those guys all don't have championships. Um, some are in the Hall of Fame, some aren't. I, do you have to have won a championship? Basically, you're saying Ch Simone's a champion. He just doesn't have the ring to prove it. Yeah, it, you know, it kind of, it's kind of a personal question with me because my best friend and growing up, we were the best man in each other's weddings is Clay Matthews. And Clay played 21 years in the NFL and all solid was, was I don't believe, won a Super Bowl. He's with the Browns most of that time, with the Falcons. But I think he's a Hall of Famer and he's not going to be and or hasn't, you know, even you rarely see his name up. His brother, Bruce, the offensive lineman, obviously made that. And uh, uh, again, so what constitutes somebody being in the Hall of Fame? And, and uh, a lot of it is, who, know, who knows what it is? Um, 21 years <laughs> in the league as a linebacker, I guess that's not good enough. I mean, there are just very few people who have done it. And uh, again, it's, it's one of those things that uh, should Simone Lawrence not be in? I mean, there's guys who have played three, four years. I mean, Davis Sanchez should be in the Hall of Fame. I, I mean, he's one of the great ca Canadian corners that's played in this league, um, but isn't. I mean, those are, you know, there's, there's a lot of people out there that I believe really should be in there that, that aren't and will never be. And, you know, that's, that's the way it goes. Yeah, it's a, it's a popularity contest is what it's become. Um, so anyways, I'll come back. I'll come back on the CFL thing in a moment. I can't not talk about Super Bowl. I, I, you must have thoughts on the heat Kyle Shanahan's taking as head coach of the 49ers for at, least, for at the very least not communicating the overtime rules to his players and maybe not even realizing they were different than the regular season what, and taking the ball first in overtime at the Super Bowl. Do you have thoughts on what, – what are your thoughts on the game? Well, when I initially watched the game, I kind of agreed with you. And then as I – got to investigating it further because i don't think the fan base knew very much about the overtime rules um but as you study it and you say okay let's say that so uh they, they san francisco goes down and kicks a field goal if kansas city comes back and kicks a field goal okay it's now it's now sudden death and that's a huge advantage Okay, is that more of an advantage in getting being able to play four down football? Well, I don't think they play four down football once they get inside the 35 with Harrison Butker. I think they kick it on fourth and five. They're going to kick it, and it's going to go to it's going to go to another, you know, another uh, kickoff, and and now it's sudden death. Now a field goal wins it. Well, at that point, people would not have been questioning Sh uh, Kyle Shanahan for taking the ball. I also heard Andy Reid say he would have taken the ball. Uh, again, is having four downs in the second phase, I, I don't think you ever think of it as, okay, we're going to go down and we're going to kick a field goal. You think of it as we'll go down and we're going to score a touchdown. What now? So 
if you win the toss, you have, to me, you have two choices. One is, if you believe that if they go down and score a touchdown, we're going to come down and we're going to score a touchdown, and we're going to go for two, and we're going we're gonna to end the game there, then there's no doubt you go for, you, 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 you take the option of going second. But if you're going to play the game regular, I think you go first. And uh, granted, uh, if you, you know, if, if things happen the way they did, uh, do you want Patrick Mahomes over there? Like, for example, if I was San Francisco and they'd have gone second, and hindsight's 2020, Rod, but they go second. Um, and the first time Mahomes takes them down, scores a touchdown. So San Francisco comes back, and they're playing four-down football now. But they take it down, and they score a touchdown. Okay, you're the head. You're you're Shanahan. Do you go for two? Right there, and don't ask and me. End it? Yeah. But that that to me is the question. If if in fact you're going to go for two, because I'm not giving the ball back to Mahomes. My chances of winning the game are so slim if I give the ball back to Mahomes. He's done it. Too many times and over and over, and I don't believe he believes he will never. I just, I think he's, I just think that that's just a huge advantage. So again, yeah, well, you go second, you end up, you got to make that decision that okay, we're going to go for two. We're not going to give him a field goal wins at situation, and you know, you never know if they held him the first time, they punt the ball, they take it down, it's a field goal win situation. And they would have probably kicked the yeah. goal from the, the 10 or 15. So, again, I'm confused now. I was I'm like confused you. now. I want to move on. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's too much. I confused, it's a lot of pressure on a guy. Yeah, 123 <laughs> million people watching in America alone, let alone worldwide. Um, I think what we could all agree on is the CFL overtime rules are better. But I do want to tell you a funny story because I never did finish this with you. I don't know what your daughter said uh, about our meeting at the Bellagio, but she's a pit boss there. I don't think anybody, you don't mind me saying Holly's a pit boss at the Bellagio. No. She said, what, what do you want, Rod? What are you into? What can I help you with? And I said, well, I don't drink, I don't gamble, and I don't carouse. She, she's your daughter, so you would get the look on her face. It was like, <laughs> what, what are you doing here? <laughs> right? She was stunned. <laughs> she didn't oh, know funny. what to say. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, so thank you for uh, introducing me to your daughter that way, and it was, and it was great. And she, she had a lot on her hands. Super Bowl yeah, week. She's, she's <laughs> that was very yeah, evident was, to me. It was, uh, she was, uh, she had Jay, uh, Jay-Z and Beyonce on her table, and Jay-Z kept, Jay-Z kept calling her boss. Hey, boss. <laughs> and afterwards, she said to her boss, she says, you know, that was just, it was, te- that was 10? Tense, you know, having Beyonce and Jay, and he's calling me boss. And and her boss said to her, "You're you're not at Harris anymore, honey. This is the way it is at the Bellagio." So, uh, yeah, it was, it was an exciting week for her. And uh, I could tell. You know, I'm surprised she responded that way because she doesn't gamble, she doesn't drink, and and I'm surprised she didn't say, "Well, neither do I." And I can uh, find plenty of things to do. <laughs> no, she, well, like I say, she had a lot on her mind. Uh, she wasn't on a break, True. let's put it that way. So, True. so um, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders are claiming they won free agency. Whether it's tongue-in-cheek or not, there's a lot of people that agree with them. I think it's pretty much over. It's cooled anyways. Who won free agency in the Canadian Football League? Uh, I would say number one would be the, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. I think they got, they got Oliveira back. They got Schoen back. They signed Streveler, who I think is an upgrade at backup quarterback over Drew Brown. Uh, you know, they lost Jeff Coat to retirement, and they lost Jamarcus Hardrick. But, you know, the money that he was paid, they, they, you know, they just can't, can't couldn't do that. Uh, although the new dirty little secret in the CFL about promo money is allowing, you know, there's a couple teams in the league that are, you know, have more promo money than others. Um, so, you, you know, you never know how much of how much is what. but. Uh, you know, so I would say the Winnipeg Blue Bombers won. I mean, they come out of this with a very intact team. Brandon Alexander, another under the radar kind of guy. They didn't go out and get anybody else's players. They didn't. They didn't need them. They they feel like they have the players they need to move forward. So I would say they were 
They were one. Saskatchewan obviously did some great things. Uh, and Corey Mace is the greatest hire. Everything's great until they play a game. I mean, it's the greatest job in the world to be the head coach of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders until you lose a game. And again, how long will that take? Who knows? But I, I mean, I, they were productive. Um, you know, they bring in Hardrick, who gives them maybe a presence at right tackle. Uh, he is a one position guy. And again, he's, he's 33 years old. And, and I, I didn't think played super, but. He was the nominee for most outstanding offensive linemen. So again, you got to give them credit for signing him. AJ Ulat, I think is uh, I thought he might end up in Calgary and Cowtown, where you know the Hart brothers and the wrestling. But uh, they end up with him. And again, one of the things I thought Corey did was he's trying to change their presence on the field. He wants them to be looked at as a physical. We're going to beat the hell out of you type of team. And I give him kudos for that. And every move he's making is to that end. Uh, so I was a little surprised he didn't go after, you know, he re-signed Micah Johnson, he re-signed Lanier, uh, that he didn't go, didn't go a little harder on a few of the, you know, the defensive linemen. Uh, he had had Hendricks and Oakman and Barlow and obviously just made a decision that wasn't a direction he wanted to go. But I thought they did a, obviously, they did a, a good job that they had to do to, to, you know, again, it gives, you can see a direction. You can see them trying to do something. Um, you know, Toronto signed a lot of Canadians, and you wonder why teams have the best Canadians in the league. Well, Toronto has had that for the last two years, and one reason is they went out and signed some of those second-level guys those canadian guys that are our special teams players and and backups and they got they got uh, demontre coxy back so you know that was good hamilton has done a great job in improving their defense uh, i'm not sure what they're going to do at receiver the tim white situation you know he wants three hundred thousand dollars period and i, I doubt he's going to get that um the, the bar for the how much receivers should be paid did not get paid, get changed by the Edmonton Elks. Two straight years, they paid guys over three hundred thousand dollars. They paid receivers, and two straight years, they won four games. And I think it's it didn't help the receiver market to have have that happen. So I would be surprised if he gets three hundred. I guess he'll go back to uh, Hamilton in that. You know that two seventy, maybe twenty thousand in uh, in promo. Uh, you know, but against the cap, he'll go in that two. I'm guessing two seventy to two seventy five range. Uh, but again, I, they haven't done anything with their receiving core, which is a little worrisome. Um, but they've done a lot to upgrade their defense. Their defensive front is going to be stellar, and and they've added Jamal Peters to put on the boundary corner. Uh, so their weak, the weak side running game will be tougher because he's just a big body who is pretty physical, uh, and they have Stavros already there. So they did some nice things I liked. Um, again, back to Toronto, they they lost Pickett, Ottawa. They went and got Pickett, which I thought was a, was a, a good signing for them. Uh, they really were kind of quiet. They... Uh, they they had done Desjardins the year before. They got Dominique Grimes earlier, who I thought was a big receiver they needed. Uh, I would have liked to have seen him go out and get him an offensive lineman that kind of a, a and I'm sure they were in on Hardrick, but a guy who might change the mentality of the whole group. Of we're going to knock the hell out of you. You might beat us, but ultimately you're going to leave here limping and not feeling great about yourself because we are going to physically take it i think ottawa needs that uh and i didn't see them address that in their offensive line you know they signed all their guys back Devonte williams is going to be their running back and so again uh, montreal did they didn't do well they signed dylan win and uh tevin jones but not there's there was nothing major there uh, Edmonton, I thought adding those two special teams players from the Argos, Leak and uh, uh, Leak and Boris Beatty. Here's the thing about free agency: if you're going to go on a guy, go on a guy you can't go to the U.S. and just find it because Beatty's a U.S. player. 
basically. He's not, even though he went to Laval, he's not considered a Canadian. So he's a U.S. But you can't go find a guy who kicks kicks like Forrest Beatty. And I'm not talking about his accuracy. His accuracy is not the best in the league. But his leg strength, you can't go find guys who can do what he does. The starting field position of teams playing the Argos last year had to be, have ended up in around 20 to the 25-yard line or in because he kicks the ball off so deep, so much deeper than every other team. And I think there's a huge value in that. So uh, kudos to Edmonton for, for re-signing him. Calgary Good was... Good stuff. Calgary we, uh, was, yeah. Okay. We talked about we've unfortunately we've got a couple minutes over time here, Jim, but I, I appreciate the oh. assessment. That's a very good co coast to coast look plus a Super Bowl recap, man. I appreciate that. And uh, next week we'll have more to talk about, maybe some NFL free agency. But thanks for this. Sounds great. Thank you, Rod. Our football analyst, our football analyst, Jim Barker, five time great cup champion and XFL champ, too.